So in this video, I want to show you a new asset that I've released uh, that's going to help uh, an upcoming video that I'm working on. Uh, and that is just simply how to add QR codes to your project. There's a Python library that does this. There's some tutorials out there. Even I think Matthew Reagan has one uh, that he has done showing you how to do it as well. But what I've done is I've decided to wrap that into a container with some custom variables to make it just a little bit easier to, uh, to drop into your project. So I am going to show you, uh, if you go to the link that is in the uh, description below, it'll take you to the QR code maker. Uh, where you can uh, download it. Now, it does have a requirement. Uh, you do need to have Python uh, installed and custom path uh, set up. Uh, I've linked two already uh, tutorials, videos out there showing you how to do this. I didn't want to repeat that in this video since other people have already done a pretty good job showing you how to do that. Uh, there is kind of a standard way to install Python uh, and, and then just set the path uh, manually. Uh, and then there are some other options using Anaconda and uh, Alpha Moonbase has a widget called DD, TDPIP uh, that will bring the file in without having to go through some of this process. So you have a couple options there on how to get this done, but that is what you need to do as a prereq to get this um, to work. Uh, and the library that we're going to be using is called PyQR Code. So if you do those prerequisites and you install the PY uh, QR code, uh, then you're able to download this tox file or this complete uh, zip file with the whole demo set up already. Uh, so you'll just download that and then we will bring that into our project. So I'm just gonna start with a fresh uh, 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 file here and I'm gonna bring that tox file in. Now initially, uh, it's got a little red box here. It doesn't uh, know where the image is because we've got to set up its path. So I'm going to go over to the properties. I'm going to click on the plus. Uh, I've already set up a, and saved this file to uh, a directory here. I'm going to make a new directory, a new folder uh, that I'm going to call uh, bump new folder. And we're going to call that uh, just QR. And that is going to be our directory. And then we need to give our QR code a name. Now we can give it the static name here. You might choose in, in your Python code to dynamically change the name of this should you want to create multiples and store them for later. Usually I just keep just give it a static name of qr.ping and, uh, and just keep overriding it. Uh, I typically use this in, in a photo booth scenario where you would uh, take a photo, upload the uh, photo that was taken to a server using a PHP file, and I'm going to show that in, a, in an upcoming tutorial. Uh, and then I would create a unique uh, identifier for that file, which would then turn into a unique URL that uh, would be placed into uh, this data section here. Uh, and then you would just pulse the make QR code uh, via code, and it would generate the proper code here. So just going back over it again, we set up the uh, directory. We gave it a name so that I could know where to stick this QR code because it has to make it and then save it somewhere. And then it loads it back in. And then we can create a null so that we can uh, place that into our TD experience somewhere. Uh, so assume you would have some type of interface that says, please use your phone to scan this QR code to download your, your photo. Uh, so that's pretty much the, the use case that I use this for. Uh, you can use it for anything, though. It, it could be a URL, it's this data area here. It could be a phone number. Uh, it, it really can be anything you want, uh, up to a certain limit of characters. I, I don't remember what that limit is, but you probably won't hit it if you're just putting in a URL or some basic information. You do have a couple options here. You, If you wanted to, you could change the colors for the foreground and the background, uh, so you want to invert it, uh, we can do that. Uh, pick any custom color you like, although high contrast works best when you're talking about QR codes. Um, and that's really all there is to this. As long as you get the QR code uh, Python library properly installed, uh, this will do the rest. Uh, so I hope this, this kind of wrapper just makes it a little easier for you to drop into your project and get going with it uh, pretty straightforward. 
Uh, I don't know if you want to look in here or not, but it's, it's just uh, having to do with the custom variables feeding into this uh, main script here that just plugs it all together and calls the uh, pi code, uh, uh, pi QR code create function. And then we uh, turn it into a, a PNG file. And I've included this, uh, this other uh, self-contained um, uh, PNG uh, module within here because this was standalone. You can just keep this it was already in the file here. You don't have to re you don't have to install the PNG support for this. It's just it's already contained locally here. Just makes that a little more convenient. But really, that's all there is to this. Uh, you set up uh, your directory, your file name, the data you want to put into it. You pulse it. It generates a QR code. Rinse and repeat. Uh, it's great for any type of uh, uh, photo booth or any other type of, of way to get your whatever has happened on the screen uh, to your, your user's, uh, end user's phone for them to take with them. So I hope this has been helpful. Uh, feel free to leave any comments or any suggestions uh, on how might you might use this or any questions you have. Uh, if you have any problems getting this set up, just let me know. So I hope that was helpful. Talk to you later.